Good day, Grade 7 students, and welcome to the First Quarter Arts Week 3. Our lesson for today is about the arts and crafts of Luzon Highlands. And for the learning objectives of the First Quarter Arts Week 3, Arts and Crafts of Luzon Highlands. In this lesson, you will become familiar with the different designs, motifs, and history of their attires, fabrics, crafts, and accessories used by the people of different regions. The sculptures and architectures of Luzon reveal many aspects of the people's culture, tradition, and history. The elements and principles of art of these fascinating arts and crafts will lead you to understand the rich culture and tradition of the Philippines and that is handed down from generation to generation. First, we have the Kalinga textile. The Southern Kalinga women wear the wrap around their skirts or tapis called kain, which reaches below the knee. The Northern Kalinga woman wears saya, an ordinary woman's skirt covering the body from waist to feet. The colors used in their textile have cultural meanings. Red signifies bravery. Black is for the soil or land. White is for the flowers of the coffee trees. Yellow is for the sand. And green is for the mountains. Next, we have the Kalinga basketry. The laba is a ball shape made from rattan with sizes that vary to 20 centimeters to 50 to 150 centimeters. And one of the most unknown art form that we have in the highlands of Luzon is tattooing. The one of the national artists that we have here in the Philippines is Apu Wangod. She is known as the last mambabatok or tattoo artist. She uses traditional way of making tattoo. Her designs are based on what she sees on her surroundings like fern, centipede, serpent, dog, sun, and moon. Tattooing is another form of art from Kalinga. It usually covers the chest and the arms. It is considered as clothing and decoration. It is also signifies a rite of passage from youth to adulthood, a mark of heroism, bravery, and one's status in the community. The design usually consists of geometric patterns and lines. In Ifugao, we have a sculpture named Bulul. It is a wooden sculpture that represents the rice granary spirits. It is used in the rituals that are performed to call the ancestors to protect their rice fields from pestilence and to ask for an abundant harvest. It is a carved wooden human figure with simplified forms. These are dipped in the blood of pigs during a ritual called tunod, which means planting the seedlings in the soil. The bulol is usually made of nara, which signifies wealth, happiness, and well-being of the ifugaos. Ling Ling O, Ifugao's amulet that signifies fertility, which are worn around the neck. This amulet are made from jade, gold, copper, bronze, stone, and other materials. In the mountain province, we have a textile. 
Mountain Province is known for their burial cloth for the Kadangyan or rich people. Only female adlers were allowed to weave this burial cloth. Wains are the G-string cloth used by men as their traditional attire in the Mountain Province. In Ilocos region, we have one of the most famous tourist spots, Vigat. It is considered as the intramuros of the north. The people in Vigan retained the Spanish colonial architecture along its narrow and cobblestone streets, known as Calle Crisologo. We also have a textile. Inabel is a hand-weaving technique of the Ilocanos in producing traditional wooden loops. The different designs represent different meaning, such as binacol, weave, represents the waves of the sea. They believe that this design protects them from bad spirits. We also have the Bolina mats, usually made in Bolina, Pangasinan. Local material used to create the Bolina mats is made of buri or palm, pandanus or seagrass leaves. The leaves are dried, usually dyed, then cut into strips and woven into mats, which may be plain or integrate. We also have the pottery. Burnai is one of the most important art form in Ilocos. It is an unglazed earthen jar with small opening. It served for storing water, rice grains, and as container of salt, sugar, local wine, and bagoong. And now let's move to the arts and crafts of South Luzon. In Laguna, specifically in Laguna Paete, is considered as the wood carving of the Philippines. It is popular for the carving of saints and other religious images. They also produce wood panels with decorative carvings and florid geometric patterns. Rizal Angona Rizal is considered as the art capital of the Philippines because of the town's rich artistic expression that include music, painting, sculpting, and folk arts. According to stories, the original Gigantes were representation of Hacienderos during the Spanish colonial period. The Gigantes measures between 7 to 10 feet. These are paraded on the 22nd and 23rd of November. In Quezon Province, one of the most famous art form that we have here is kipping. Kipping is made from ground glutinous rice that is thinly coated on mature leaves and steamed over low fire. It is used during the Pahiyas Festival. Pahiyas Festival is celebrated in honor of San Isidro Labrador, the patron saint of farmers. And lastly, in Batangas, aside from its famous Lomi and Kapeng Barako, it is known for its Balisong. That's why Batangas is considered as the Balisong capital of the Philippines. It is also known as Butterfly Night.